Oh, and Chrysler CEO, Bob Nardelli. Bob, great to see you. Thank you for being here again. Uh, you know, I think consumers are a little smarter than the White House thinks they are. They, when they buy produce by the pound, when they buy meat by the pound, when they buy your old neighborhood, when they buy lumber by the square foot, uh, you don't put that in little, little pretzel bags or anything. You're buying it for what it is. And when they see the prices go up, they know it's not shrinkflation, it's inflation, right? Yeah. Well, David, let me, let me say this. Um, I've been talking about shrinkflation for some time. You know, as an astute uh, consumer, when you walk that retail aisle, the price may be the same, but the contents inside is less. Now, now we see the president finally uh, realize that when his snicker bar, I guess, got shrink, shrunk or smaller, and you're paying about a dollar an ounce for that for that snicker bar. But yeah, shrinkflation has been around, but inflation, to your earlier comment, I think is going to be up also. I would say both personal and professional. Home insurance up nine percent. Fair market value property tax three to five percent. If you think about containers back to COVID time, $20,000 a container. My business in aerospace, we're seeing as a result of raw materials, price increases. So I would predict inflation tomorrow will be up. Uh, but it's anybody's guess. And, you know, I think I did a better job last night predicting the football outcome than maybe <laughs> this inflation number. Yeah, David. yeah. But what do you think, just politically speaking for a second, Bob? I know that's you're, you're more specialized in actual businesses. But when the president is trying to, fo to hoist the blame of inflation on shrinkflation in corporations as opposed to his own responsibility of deficit spending, et cetera, uh, do, you think, do you think voters might buy that or not? Not at all, David, not at all. I mean, this is just another ploy by this administration. I mean, the debacles that started his first day, energy prices, the debacle on going to EV, and now we're seeing a plethora of people being laid off, jobs being closed, because, you know, at one point it was the economy stupid. Well, this is, it's charging stupid. And you can't force consumers to buy something they don't want, even if you try to mandate it through an administration. So no, no, the, the, the general population will not be duped by this aversion to try and blame inflation on corporate America. It starts at the raw materials, it starts at transportation, it starts at energy, a whole host of things that are driving this up. Wage increases, we're now seeing people being laid off, David. UPS, you know, uh, uh, 12,000 people. If you look at techs, they've laid off almost 40,000 people. I mean, we're seeing a tremendous shift yeah. in employment out there where, where people are being laid off. Uh, Ford laid people off because of EV. GM laid people off because of the cruise program. Right. We're just seeing a Stellantis laid people off because of wait, the UAW wage increase. So, no, I think we're still in an inflationary period. I think we're not going to see a soft landing would be my prediction, hmm. but I hope I'm wrong. Well, the other thing that's up besides prices, of course, are interest rates as the Fed tries to battle uh, the problem. And, and interest rates, of course, translate into, into higher prices for your car if you're buying it with a loan or certainly with your house if you're buying a mortgage. Uh, so that's hurting people as well. But the, the, my question is the, the spending continues from Washington. We now have these annual deficits of $2 trillion. I know we had we, we, that began during the Trump administration when they were battling the pandemic, spending all that money on government programs. But that was temporary spending. What Biden has been laying down down over the past three years is a permanent increase in the baseline of spending that's causing trillion dollar deficits a month, you know, year after year now. Yeah, David, a couple of points. I don't know if the general public really understands that these interest rates are killing middle market companies and lower middle market. Uh, we've seen companies where we've had $2 million of interest rates now explode to 12, 13, 14 million dollars. And the free cash flow that we generate is going to pay the man. So that's point number one. Point number two, you're exactly right. We cannot afford this type of, of interest rates that we're bearing today. I mean, you couldn't afford it as an individual, uh, you know, in trying to balance, balance your budget. This is all about, I think, trying to buy votes. This is all about an, uh, an administration that is out of control, who have a strong bias towards spending versus having a conservative policy for a sustainable future rather than trying to satisfy yeah. people in the short term, yeah. David. It is just absolutely wrong. Bob Mardelli, what a wonderful way to start the week. Thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate it.